PHP is a dynamically typed language. This means that variables don't have a fixed type. However, PHP does have an optional strong type system. In this video, we'll see how using this will make your code simpler, easier to read and easier to maintain. Before we get into how to use the type system, let's start by looking at how types work in PHP. PHP is a dynamically typed language. This means that we don't have to specify the data type of a variable. Instead, PHP determines the type based on its content. In addition to this, PHP also does automatic type conversion where necessary. This is known as type coercion or type juggling. Let's use PHP's interactive mode to look at an example of this. Let's create a variable called amount and assign it an integer value of 3. If we use the getType function to print out its type, we can see that it's an integer. Let's now add a float value of 1.99 to this using the addition assignment operator. The variable now contains 4.99. Now if we print out the type of the variable, we can see it's been automatically converted to a float. For historical reasons, the getType function calls float values doubles. The full list of how different types are type juggled like this is in the documentation. Let's look at this in the context of a function. Consider this code. Here we have a function called add, which has two arguments a and b. The body of the function adds these two values together and returns the result. After the function, let's call it with arguments of two and 2. To see what this returns, we'll use vardump which will print out the value and its type. Let's run this script on the command line and, as expected, when adding 2 and 2 together, we get an integer value of 4. Let's try this with some different values. Before we do that, Let's add some code to the function to print out the type of each argument. Which we can get using the getType function and we'll print a new line character at the end of each line so the output is easy to read. If we run that again on the command line, we can see that both arguments are integers. Let's change the second argument to 2.5, a float value. If we run this again, we see the second argument is recognized as a double or float, and the result is also a float. Let's try that with a string and the second argument is recognized as such, with the result being an integer. Here the string has been type juggled into an integer to provide an integer result. This worked because the string contained a number. Let's try it with a string that isn't a number. And now we get a warning when we try and add a non-numeric string to an integer. This happens because PHP couldn't coerce this string value into an integer. Now let's add some type declarations to these function arguments. These are entirely optional, but they help to ensure that the value of an argument is of the specified type. Let's declare that both these arguments must be integers, 
which we do by putting the int type declaration before each argument. Let's call this with two integers. When we run this, as before, the two arguments are integers and we get an integer result. Nothing has changed. Let's change the second argument to 2.5 again. When we ran this before, the result was the float value 4.5. Now when we run it, the second argument is shown to be an integer, and the result is the integer value 4. What's happened is the int type declaration makes PHP convert this argument to an integer using type juggling. So the float value 2.5 was converted to the integer value 2, and the result is 4. Let's try a string argument again. When we run this, again the argument is shown to be an integer, as PHP has type juggled the string to an integer. If we try a string argument that doesn't contain a number, when we run it, instead of a warning, we now get a fatal error, specifically a type error. The error description is very specific. The second argument passed to the add method must be an integer, but instead a string was given. Using a type declaration tells us exactly what the problem is in our code. We can do more than this. Just by adding type declarations like this, PHP will use type juggling to try and coerce the argument values to the specified type. We can change this to be more strict by turning strict type mode on. We do this with a declare statement at the top setting the strict types value to 1. This must be the first line of the script, even before a namespace. Let's try this again with two integers. This works as before with no problems. Now let's try it with a float argument. Before we turn strict types on, this value was coerced to the integer value of 2, and the result was 4. With strict types on, now we get a type error. With strict types enabled, we effectively turn type juggling off and require the arguments to be of the specified type. When using type declarations, we can use scalar values, such as integers, floats and strings, but also classes, interfaces, and types like self and parent. A full list of available types is in the official documentation. In addition to function arguments, we can also add type declarations to return values and class properties. For example, consider this class. We can add type declarations to the method argument and to its return value by adding a colon at the end followed by the type declaration. We can also add type declarations to the class properties. In PHP 8, union types were added, so a type declaration can be one or more types, separating them with a pipe character. You can also make a type declaration nullable. That is, in addition to the specified type, a null value is also accepted by prefixing it with a question mark. As for enabling strict mode, to maintain backwards compatibility, strict type checking is optional. It's enabled on a file-by-file -file basis by adding this declare line to the top 
as we just saw. So type declarations serve two basic purposes. First, they enforce the correct type for arguments, return values and class properties. This means it's more difficult to misuse methods and we have to write less type checking code. Second, it makes the code easier to read. It's clearer what a method accepts and what it will return. This makes your code easier to maintain and less prone to bugs. All the code shown in this video is linked to in the description. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.